Hi, I'm Sophie Medina, and I'm a firefighter for the FDNY. Like firefighting, caregiving is a demanding job that places the well-being and safety of others in your hands. The physical limitations of older and frailer individuals living in adult foster homes make them much more vulnerable in the event of an emergency, so it's important to know how to keep them safe in these situations. Through funding from FEMA and in partnership with the International Association of Fire Chiefs, we are proud to present a fire safety and disaster preparedness video designed for adult foster home operators and staff. To properly equip an adult foster home for a fire or other emergency, we'll go through each room of the house, identify potential hazards, and explain the best ways to avoid them. We'll start in the kitchen, where the majority of home fires begin. The leading cause of fires in the kitchen, unattended cooking. Stepping away from cooking, even to answer the phone, is an unnecessary risk. If you need to take a call or help a resident in another area of the house, simply turn off the burners while you're away. Cooking can always wait. It's also important to keep your kitchen clean and free of clutter. Items like kitchen towels and pot holders should be kept away from the stove to prevent them from catching fire. Be sure to clear your floors of loose mats or area rugs as they pose as a tripping hazard. And when you're using the stove, keep pots and pans on the back burners with the handles turned inward. This reduces the likelihood of burns and spills from hot items. It's also a good idea to keep a box of baking soda and a large lid near your stove. If a grease fire flares up suddenly, you can cover it with the lid or smother the flames of baking soda. Never attempt to touch or move a pot or pan that's caught fire. If a fire ever ignites in the oven, simply turn off the oven and keep the door closed until the fire is extinguished. According to the National Fire Protection Association, kitchen fires are the third leading cause of fire-related deaths, so practice these tips to ensure the safety of you and your residents. To review, keep the kitchen clean and free of clutter. Never leave the stove on unattended. Place pots on the back burners with the handles facing inward. Keep a lid and baking soda nearby to smother a potential grease fire. Never try to move a pot or pan while it is on fire. If you don't have central heating, you probably use space heaters in your home to provide extra warmth during colder months. Space heaters are a great way to keep your home warm, but it's important that you use them properly. To prevent anything from catching fire, Portable heaters should be at least three feet from anything flammable like furniture, drapes, and bedding, and they should have an automatic shutoff function in case they tip over. Plug directly into the wall, and most importantly, turn off the heater when sleeping or leaving the room. You shouldn't use portable heaters if your residents have limited mobility or difficulty with memory. One of the most important ways to protect your residents is to place functioning smoke alarms in each of their bedrooms. Smoke alarms should be placed on the ceiling at least four inches from the wall and away from corners of the room as it takes longest for smoke to accumulate in those areas. If it's necessary to mount a smoke detector on the wall, make sure there is at least one foot of space between the alarm and the ceiling. In addition to all bedrooms, smoke alarms should be placed in all hallways on every level of the house and at the top of any staircases. All smoke detectors must be loud enough to wake occupants throughout the home. Test your smoke alarms monthly to ensure that they're functioning properly. If you have residents who are hearing impaired, smoke alarms with strobe lights or vibrating pillow units can be purchased through safety supply stores. To review, keep space heaters at least three feet from furniture, drapes, and any other flammable items in a room. Never leave space heaters unattended. Install smoke alarms on every floor, in each bedroom, and outside every sleeping area in the home. Test smoke alarms at least once a month. Purchase special strobing or vibrating smoke alarms for hearing impaired residents. The laundry room may be a small space in your house, 
but a dryer generates a lot of heat that can start fires due to lint buildup. Cleaning your dryer's lint screen after each use is the first step in preventing laundry room fires. But it's also important to clean inside, behind, and underneath your dryer from time to time. If your clothes feel hotter than normal at the end of a cycle, it's a sign that you should check your dryer for lint buildup in the exhaust hose. The exhaust hose on your dryer must be aluminum ducting. If it's made of vinyl, replace it immediately. Vinyl hoses are prone to overheating and burning. Now let's move on to the next room in the house. The single greatest hazard in the living room is open flames, and this is for a few reasons. First, open flames are often left unattended throughout the course of a day. Second, some of your residents may be on oxygen, and oxygen canisters are highly combustible. The safest thing you can do is instate a no open flames policy in your foster home. Careless smoking is the leading cause of fire fatalities. So if you have residents who smoke, have a designated smoking area outside at least 10 feet from any entrance to ensure their safety. We recommend a no smoking policy in adult foster care homes. For residents on oxygen, make sure their tanks are placed at least six feet from any type of heat source. That includes electrical baseboards, space heaters, ovens, and hair dryers. In the event of a natural disaster, always have at least three days worth of oxygen on hand. Store these canisters upright in a well-ventilated space that avoids direct sunlight, like a basement, closet, or storage shed. Oxygen tanks must be secured to prevent the cylinders from falling over, and no smoking signs must be posted in any room where oxygen is in use. The living room often has a lot of electrical gadgets plugged into the wall and a wall adapter may overload your circuits. So make sure you use surge protectors with a circuit breaker to prevent electrical fires. To review, instate a no open flames policy in your home. If residents are smokers, have a designated smoking area outside at least 10 feet from any entrance. Place oxygen tanks six feet away from heat sources. Always have three days worth of oxygen on hand. Use surge protectors with circuit breakers instead of wall adapters. If a fire occurs in the home, first and foremost, you should alert your residents and call for help. But if the fire is small and contained, like a stovetop fire, and you have a clear escape route, you can extinguish the fire yourself. By law, you're required to have at least one class 2A 10BC fire extinguisher accessible on every floor, including basements. They should be mounted on a wall with the carrying handle placed three and a half to five feet above the floor. We recommend that you keep additional fire extinguishers in any room that poses a fire hazard. You'll be glad to have one nearby in the event of an emergency. To prevent the dry chemicals from settling, you can maintain your fire extinguishers by gently shaking them once a month. Replace or have them inspected once a year. Every adult foster home is required to have an emergency plan. This is a comprehensive guide to your home containing the necessary information about each of your residents along with evacuation procedures in the event of an emergency. This includes lists of their medications, family and medical contacts, and any special emergency needs. A written emergency plan should be developed, maintained, and adjusted for each new resident in the home. Also required in your emergency plan is an escape route for your home. In the event of a fire, a timely escape is critical, so it's important to take the physical limitations of your residents into consideration when drafting your plan. Your plan must get everyone out of the house in under three minutes. So let's go over what you can do to make that happen. One, identify two clear ways to leave each room. Often these will be a door and a window. Remember that locks on both doors and windows can be complicated and might be difficult for someone with arthritis to open. So make sure your residents understand how to access these exits on their own. Two, consider how each person will get out of the house. Intense heat and smoke 
may make it hard to walk upright. So in a real fire, crawling may be your only option for escape. Those who are able can practice staying low during drills. And remember to close all accessible doors and windows behind you. A closed door can slow a fire up to 20 minutes. Residents with limited mobility may need to be carried. Common methods include a blanket drag or chairlift. A timely escape is critical, and as the temperature increases, there is a risk of flashover, when a room gets so hot that everything bursts into flames. Practice multiple ways out with all occupants of the home, including family members and staff. Substitute caregivers should be oriented to your home's procedures during their first day at work. Three, know how to re-enter your home. In case you are forced to exit the home through a window, it's a good idea to keep a spare key hidden somewhere outside. This way, you'll be able to open the door for others to get out. Once everyone has escaped, do not re-enter for any reason until firefighters say it is safe. Four, post a label with who to call in an emergency and the address, cross streets, and phone number of your home on each phone. This allows everyone in the house to provide an emergency responder with the correct information. So first responders can easily find your home. Make sure your home address is clearly marked outside. If you have residents on oxygen, ask your oxygen supply company to provide a sign indicating that oxygen tanks are used in the home. Five, identify a clear point of safety. This point should be at least 50 feet from the home, clear from items that could easily catch fire, and away from areas that could block emergency vehicles. Practice your escape plan with your residents at least every 90 days and once a year during sleep hours. These drills are an excellent reinforcement and help to identify any obstacles that could slow your exit during a real fire. So let's review what we've learned about emergency plans. Keep a written copy of your emergency plan in the home at all times. Create an escape route that takes the physical limitations of your residents into consideration. Practice your three minute escape drill with residents, family members, and all staff every 90 days. Keep a spare set of keys hidden near the house. Post your phone number, address, and cross streets on every phone in the home. Identify a point of safety at least 50 feet from the home. Many of the principles of planning, management, and recovery apply to all types of emergencies. Though less common than house fires, as a caregiver, you're also responsible to act in the event of a natural disaster. An earthquake is an example of a natural disaster that can occur without any warning. In the event of an earthquake, the first action is to rapidly take cover under a sturdy piece of furniture or against an interior wall until the shaking stops. One of the most vulnerable places in an earthquake is in bed, so avoid having shelves, pictures, or mirrors above them. You often know when severe weather is coming, and the best course of action is to stay indoors and to listen to the advice from local authorities. There are two types of responses you may be advised to take. The first is to take shelter in the home. In these instances, you'll need to have the proper provisions to sustain your household for several days. Let's go over what you'll need. One, keep your lawn clear of debris. Loose items on your lawn are a hazard during severe weather. Remove these items if there's advance notice of an oncoming storm. A clean roof and gutters also reduces the risk of a leak or structural problem in the event of severe weather. Two, have a backup generator. Residents that require a life-sustaining system like a ventilator will need electricity during a power outage. Have at least three days worth of electricity on hand at all times. Three, create a disaster kit. This should include emergency money, non-perishable food, blankets, and enough water for each resident for three days. One gallon of water per resident per day is what's recommended. Also include battery-powered flashlights, a hand crank radio, and any other provisions you think are necessary to get you and your residents through several days. Four, know how to shut off water and gas to the home. 
If local authorities recommend turning off water or gas, keep the necessary wrenches available to do so. Once you've turned off your gas valve, a trained professional from your utility service will need to make sure it's safe before turning it back on. The second type of response is to leave the home and temporarily relocate. If this is the case, you'll need to be prepared for each resident's departure. One, plan ahead. Some adult foster homes have made advanced arrangements with local hotels, churches, and community centers. Think about options for your home and see if there are good alternatives for your residents. Two, create go bags for each resident. This should include contact and medical provider information, a change of clothes, food, water, medications, and medical supplies. Pack in a bag or box and keep in a secure, accessible place so that you can update them periodically. When deciding which course of action to take, be in touch with local authorities to determine the best way to stay safe. Once a disaster is over and you eventually bring your residents back home, Helping them contact friends and family can bring them comfort and peace of mind. Consider arranging for an out-of-state contact who can relay updates and provide a contact for residents' family. To review, prepare a plan for both sheltering in your home and evacuating during a natural disaster. Keep a disaster kit with at least three days worth of essentials for every resident and occupant of the home. Have your evacuation plan and go bags for all residents and occupants. If you feel there is any sort of emergency in your home, don't second guess yourself. Call for help. Firefighters would much rather respond to a false alarm than have lives in danger. I hope you've acquired some important tools for how to provide a well-equipped and safe environment for your residents. On behalf of FEMA and the IAFC, stay safe and thanks for watching.